Hi guys, it's Jamie here. For today's tutorial, we're going to try to combine the jelly prints that we've done before with some newer graphics and also Zentangle art. I've already brushed the original jelly print with some water and now I'm using some acrylic pouring paints to add extra colour to the background. I'm spraying with a little water because I want that sea-like patterning. I also use flicking the brush over the paper as well as touching the very wet paper with the colour on the brush. Once I'm happy with the amount of colours on that background, I leave it to dry naturally. I don't want to use a hot air gun on this because it will push the colours around even more. Rather than have to make decisions about where I should use my black marker to create the Zentangle neurographic art background, I simply follow the shapes and patterns of the different colours. I felt by following the colours as they were on the background, this helped with the mindfulness and the Zen aspect of this background piece. After I'd filled in maybe the bottom third with the random lines following the colours, I decided I needed to make more positive decisions and go outside of that process. Therefore, I added some circles and I needed to decide what sort of patterning I was going to do because I wanted to repeat that patterning in different parts of the project. Having filled the page and having had a break from it so you can step back and think about things, I decided I wanted to try and add some white. So here we are, I've added more white, I've added more black, however I've overdone the white by making some areas pure white, the big blocky areas, and I didn't like it. I started to cover some of that up using gold foil but actually I decided I didn't need such a big piece so I cut some away and thought I will solve this extra white area problem once that's done. My first solution, being a glitter sort of person, was to add bits of gold foil to some of the areas to make that look more deliberate than just me covering up my white out mistakes. My next solution is to go over some of the other white areas with a black marker pen and create stronger, bolder patterns, even though I am aware that I am going to add a central focus, probably a mermaid, and all of this might be covered up. I don't know what's going to be covered up, so I'm going to make the background as I would like it first, and if I've done some work, that has either been cut away or covered up, so be it. I am trying to leave some patterning in here for you so you can see the different patterns that I used or thought about using throughout the piece. Like you've got the black silhouette leaves over some of the planar areas, white dots, just to give you ideas that you could also work with. I think we're now at one day later and this surface has been protected with a spray. To my side, I have mermaid pictures. I've got these in different sizes for you and actually different templates, but I've already decided I'm going to use one of these Art Nouveau style mermaids, but I'm going to provide extra ones for you in Dropbox. I apologize in advance. This does take some cutting out if you really want to fussy cut between that taily wave look. I'm now using a matte medium to glue the mermaid to the design. Because she has a circle around her, I'm using the nearly full circle on the background and placing it slightly skew width on that circle because I think that adds interest. And now I'm going over the surface of the mermaid with a matte medium just so that should I decide to do some processes on that figure, I will have the grip and I shouldn't lose the print underneath. I'm knocking out any brush strokes by using my finger to rub over the area and make sure it's all fully glued down. I'm pretty sure I'm now on to day three or four of this project. I do think it's a good idea to take breaks in between. I happen to have my daughter visiting, so I could only work at certain times. 
but I do think that little break, walk away from the desk, does help anyway. So I don't regret not being able to do it in a shorter space of time. I'm using my ink intensive bark to go round that fussy cut. I'm using a fine paintbrush dipped in water to pull that ink intensive bark watercolour pencil out and make the outline much much stronger. I still think she's too plain against that background. I want her to stand out more so I have a gold fine liner paint pen. I'm going to draw in some fishtails, take that gold through some of that wave action at the bottom of her tail, add some accessories to her body and hopefully she will then glitter as much as the gold foil in the background. I really don't have many gel pens. I've kind of ruined them by using them over oil pastels in the past. I have managed to find some that are in the mermaid sea background colours. Therefore, I'm going to use a combination of those colours to fill in her fishtail, add some extra lines to the waves and generally make her glitter a little bit more. The point of a common paste book is to write in areas of wisdom or poetry, things that inspire you. I had some thoughts after the week with my daughter that for me at 56 seem quite wise. So I've created a writing area alongside the picture using one of the mermaid printables and I'm just filling that in. So here we have it, the second page in our commonplace book with a piece of art and a piece of wisdom. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I've tried to pull together various different tutorials we've done throughout June and July into one bigger piece to show you how it can work in your commonplace book or a piece of art on the wall. And I will catch you very, very soon. Bye.